Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26. And while you're turning there, would you also go to Luke chapter 22, Matthew chapter 26, Luke chapter number 22. We've already had a good service at the 8 o'clock hour, had several, had some saved and three baptized at the early hour. That always excites me there. Looking forward to what God's going to do in this hour. Let's all stand as we read the Word of God, Matthew chapter 26. And verse 31, Matthew 26, verse 31. If you have it, give me a good strong amen. amen. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, That this night, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Now would you go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22 and look at verse 55. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth this fellow was also with him, for he's a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. I want you to notice, I get my sermon from the whole passages I just read, but my, from this, especially from these verses right here in verse 61, And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord. I want to, take, I want to talk to you. I hope you listen to me. I was thinking, just I was just out walking and praying, and these thoughts came to my mind as I was just out walking and praying, and I thought that these thoughts, as I thought about them, I thought I'd like to share these with the church. I want to talk to you this morning on this topic, I told you so. I told you so. Father, oh, I wish people would listen. I wonder how you look down from heaven sometime. Though you never actually say those words, I think a lot of times after we've gotten to the other side and we got the fruit, we realize, man, I wish. That I told you so is kind of whispered in our minds. Lord, I pray that this morning that the words that I, the cautions that I give to our church, I pray they would listen. I think of teenagers that are in here right now. I know not all the teenagers in here, but some of them are, and they're sitting well so far, and I appreciate them sitting here and listening, and I hope that they would give me the undivided attention because sometimes a man with gray hair, they think they know better. I pray they'd not do that. I pray that every person would listen this morning. Oh, God, let me help your people, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We know the story well. Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he tells them, he says now, he says, he says here in the book of Matthew, he talks, as he's talking, he says, you, all of you are going to be offended because of me this night. He says, you're all going to leave me tonight, you're going to run off and do your own thing. And Peter, as we know, as was Peter's case, Peter tended to talk without thinking. And he looked at Jesus, and he said, Jesus, he says, if I have to die with you tonight, he says, I'm not going to deny you. I, 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 he says, I, I'm going with you all the way. If I have to die, I'll die with you. He says, you can count on me. I'm going to be here. 
Jesus looked back at Peter. And he said, Peter, before the cock crow, you'll deny me three times. Peter said, not me. No, nah, not me. He says, I, I know, I know what's in my heart. I'm not like the rest of the eleven. I at least walked on water. All they did was stay inside the boat. He says, I'm not going to deny you. We know the story. They came. They took Jesus. The Bible says that the disciples did scatter. But one followed afar off. That one that followed afar off was Peter. And Peter, you know, sometimes we can kind of criticize Peter. But at least he was following at a distance. Where were the rest of the disciples? I mean, we can criticize him for being at the heathen's fire. Where were the rest of the disciples? At least he was at least in an in a eye shot of the Savior. Where were the rest of the disciples? And yet here he is. He's standing at a far off and he's warming at the heathen's fire. And someone, a little maid comes and says, I thought I saw you with Jesus. He goes, I don't know who that is. Somebody else came and said, but I, I know that. I know you belong. I, I saw you. He says, man, I don't even know what you're talking about. Somebody else came and said, now, I know you belong to him. He says, you speak like them. And the Bible says in another passage of Scripture that Peter began to curse and to swear and, the, and, the, and to take God's name in vain. And as soon as he did that, that old rooster began to crow. You ever hear a rooster crow? You can hear it. That old rooster crowed, and all Jesus did looked. That's all he had to do is just look. And man, all of a sudden, that look was, was the, I told you so. Peter, you should have listened to me. I told you to watch and pray. But you didn't listen. You didn't keep yourself awake to even pray, not knowing what was going to come. I told you, Peter. Now here you are. You've denied the church. You denied your faith. You denied your God. And Peter, the Bible says, went out and wept bitterly because the, that little phrase. Now, I, I praise Peter for the fact that though he had the I told you so moment in his life, he didn't live in the I told you so moment. He got right with God, and God used him in a great way. But can I tell you, that I told you so moment, if he had just listened to the Savior and done what the Savior said, he would have never had that moment where he had, where he denied the Savior. Instead, he's sleeping when he should have been praying. He was not doing what he should have been doing, all because he didn't listen to the Savior. He was more confident in himself than the Savior was. I had read that passage of Scripture that morning. And I went out and was praying. And I thought to myself, I'm a pastor of a church. And I wonder how many times I've told some people don't do something. Then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And the Holy Spirit began to say, I wonder how many times I've told you something. Amen. Somebody help me out. Amen. I wonder how many times I've told you something and you didn't listen. Right. I wonder how many times I've poked you in the heart and you didn't listen. And look where it got you. The, I told you so of the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden began to say, I told you so. And you should have listened to me that first time. We've all been there, have we not? We've all been there, and you don't think, well, I've never been there. You need to straighten up that little halo. It got cracked and got cut, and, and two things are poking out of your head. Look like horns. That's your halo. They got stuck in the crown of your head. And I'm telling you right now, you're not as good as you think you are. And when you think you're that good, hey, like Jesus said, he said before the cock crow, you'll deny me three times. It's going to happen to everybody that I told you so. The Christian life, the Christian trail, is bloodied by the saints that wouldn't listen when the Savior poked at the heart and said, you need to do this. Many a Christian sits on the wayside living in that little world of, I told you so. They should have listened to the word of God being preached. They should have cautioned to the Holy Spirit tugging on their heart. They should have listened to the mom and dad who told them don't do that. They should have just said, okay, I, I, I'll, I'll at least listen for the sake. I don't want to end up in that I told you so world. 
Can I tell you some instances when a lot of people end up in that I told you so world? I'm just going to give you just a few instances. We'll remember those words of caution that have come from this pulpit. Amen. Then preached. We thought we knew better than the preacher in God's word. And went ahead and went our own way. How many times have people, listen to me, done their own thing and thought it'll never happen to me? I can tell you right now, many a person has said, I can tell you about a young man right now sitting in, the, in, in New Mexico prisons, has life in prison. He said, when I was in evangelism, he, he heard me preach and he heard me preach against sin, even surrendered his life to preach the gospel, wouldn't get right with God and kept on going down the wrong road today. He serves a life sentence. He's preaching now, but he's preaching in an I told you so world because he wouldn't listen to the man of God that said, you better separate from some of them friends, some of them friends you run with that you think I can control them. I got news for you, the wrong friend always brings everybody down. Many a person has sat and heard the caution of the man of God as he says, you need to be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And you said, I don't believe that. But then you grow, your children grow up, go the way of the world and break your heart. And you, then all of a sudden, I told you so, starts coming back. That I told you so starts coming to mind as you as you as you ta- as you taught your children that things are more important than church by not being in church because you just didn't feel like it or you you just didn't want to be there you didn't want to take that effort. Can I tell you? You never waste your life when you give your life to serving God. You never waste the time when the family is together serving God, doing right inside a church. You never waste that time. I'm telling you right now, I have watched many a person go down that road. I've watched many a person just say, well, I, 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 don't, I don't think it, it'll never happen to me. Those words of caution come back. Yes. Yeah. You heard this story. My daddy being in prison. He was a pastor for many years. One year before his arrest, he was working on a church van. Up in the mountain, up in the hills of California. He was up there in the mountain by himself, and my dad was always Mr. Careful. He'd always make sure the van was just was set right so that there could be no damage. And I can remember, I remember one night I got a phone call by my mama, and my mama said, Son, you need to thank God your daddy's alive. And I said, Why? What happened? He was working on that van, and that van fell on him and missed crushing his throat just by, she said, about a half inch. He had a big old gash in the side of his neck. I was sitting visiting my dad in prison one day. I, it was about the third time I think I'd visit him in prison. I said, Dad, I said, I just got to ask you this question. Why? My dad dropped his head. He says, son, you remember how I used to preach? And I used to talk about people that thought that would say it would never happen to them. He said, I thought it'd never happen to me. He said, one year before I got arrested, remember when that van fell and almost, almost killed me? He said, I knew that was God. He said, that van should have never fallen. He says, it was secure. He said, I believe God took his hand and knocked that jack out from underneath that van. And he said, he allowed it to fall to try to warn me, just like Peter was warned and said, I'm telling you, before the cock crow, you'll deny me three times. And my daddy said, son, he said, I didn't listen to the, I told you so. I didn't listen to the caution of the very words preached that we both heard with, uh, throughout our lifetime. And he says, I sit in prison. And he says, you tell people that when the preacher preaches, they need to listen when they think it won't happen to them. He says, nobody is a way it will, will get around preaching. I'm getting with the preaching of, of sin. You've got to do what is right. My dad even wrote me a little letter just to kind of remind me of that. He said, I wish I'd have listened. Yes, you'll always remember the words of caution, ladies and gentlemen. 
I have said I've been pastor here for six years. I have visited people in prison, yeah. in jail. Yeah. They've told me I should have listened to you. Yeah. I should have listened to you. Yeah. I should have listened to my mama. Should have listened to my daddy. Should have listened to Sunday school teacher. Should have listened to the word of God. I should have listened. Yeah, the words of Carson always come back at the wrong time, do they not? And teenager, you may think you got the world by the tail, but can I tell you, the world's got you by your tail, and you better listen right now. There's some people that love you enough that'll bring you to church, let you sit in the church, and let a preacher prepare and pray for you and say, do right. Hey, don't let the words of Carson just go by the wayside. Listen to what the man of God says. There's a second thing we'll always remember. We'll remember the times that we took for granted. I think of the disciples walking down the Emmaus Road. Jesus rose from the dead. They're walking down the Emmaus Road. They're so blinded by themselves they can't even tell this is the Savior. And they... Jesus says, why are you all so sorrowful? They say, Have you, are you a stranger? Are you, are you not from this area? Do you not know what just happened? The one that we thought was a Savior was killed, and they've, they've killed our Savior. And Jesus then, at that moment, began to expound the Scriptures to them as they're walking down the Emmaus Road. The Bible says he, would, he, he made as if he'd have gone further. And they said, would you come in? And, he, and Jesus, all of a sudden, he went with them. And as they, all of a sudden, he ascended out of their presence. He was gone. All of a sudden, their eyes eyes were opened yeah. and as their eyes were opened all of a sudden they realized man we had the Savior walking with us yeah. man we had, the, we, had the, we had Jesus Christ right there we had his words right there we had the very presence of God right there we, we saw him for three years perform the miracles we heard every sermon that he preached and yet here we are now he's God oh let me tell you something those times you take for granted can I tell you right now you better enjoy when you get to see what God's doing why one day you'll look back and say I wish I'd have got involved and not sit on the sidelines I wish I'd have done something to be part of what God is doing there I preached a sermon, I believe it was last Sunday night, and I talked about a church in Akron, Ohio. Get this now, used to be a thriving church today. Church is closed down, and people now look back and say, I wish I could have just had it one more time. I know we're not the only church in the world, but I can tell you right now, we're not the normal church. And I can tell you right now what God's doing in this place is truly miraculous. Amen. I'm, just, I'm just telling you. Amen. We've gone where that first Sunday is here, 122 that first Sunday to a big day of 1,000 where we're now averaging over 500 in church every Sunday. You say, what? how's that? Oh, let me tell you something. When God's doing something, you better enjoy every bit of what God's doing because one day it'll be gone and you'll look back and say, boy, I wish I could have that back. I wish I could hear that preacher one more time. I wish that he would, somebody would just stand up and sound aloud. Why? Because it's not everywhere. I've been in those churches where God was blessing. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. My wife, one of the reasons why I'm even pastoring right now is because of a conversation my wife and I had when we talked about some of the great days that we saw as young adults of being in a church where we had 3,000 people saved in one service. Amen. My wife looked at me and she said, Don't, she goes, isn't it sad our daughter will never see that. Not a day goes by that I don't think in my heart, man, I wish I could hear that preacher preach one more time. I wish I could sit in this. And it wasn't that I wasn't soaking it in. I did, but I'd just like to hear him preach one more time. I'd like to see the soul saved one more time. I'd like to see the bus routes all over the Chicago region I'm bring in thousands of people. Every, I, hey, while, we're, while, while God's working in this place, Maranatha Baptist Church, we better enjoy every minute of it. Soak it in. Don't sit on the sidelines. Jump in. Get involved. Why? One day It'll be gone. You'll look back and you say, Well, I wish I'd have done more. Amen. Times we take for granted. My mama's in heaven, been in heaven for I think 17 years now. It's hard to believe she's been gone that long. 
Many a time I wish I could call my mama up. I long to have another hug of my mama. I long for my mama to, well, before I hang up, hear my mama say, son, I'm proud of you. But see, while I had her, I, needed, I shouldn't have taken her for granted for any moment. And I'm talking to some of you right now. You take your parents for granted. You say, my parents aren't perfect. Well, are you the perfect child? Until you become the perfect child, I think you ought to appreciate the mom and dad that you have. Unless you got nail prints in your hands, I think that you ought to take you ought to say, Thank God for a mama that raised me and a daddy that raised me. It may not be perfect. Can I tell you? Oh, my dad, oh, he's not a perfect dad, but he trained me how to work hard. He trained me some, some principles in life. Can I tell you? Hey, one day you'll look back and you'll say, I wish I wouldn't have taken them for granted. I look at some of the people in our church who've gone the way to heaven. And I say to myself, I, I think of oh, Brother Laubach. Oh, Brother Laubach joined our church because he liked it that we're a soul winning church. Amen. Got involved in the church, and oh, Brother Laubach now is in heaven, walking on streets of gold. I, 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 there's, a, there's times I wish he could come back and see, because he, he knew this was going to happen here. We're just still in the old building over there. He knew what God was going to do. Oh, let me tell you right now, hey, there's going to be times of remembrance. We look back and say, if I could just have it back. Amen. We'll remember those times of caution. We'll remember the times that we took for granted, times when the preacher said, now you better be careful about moving away. Because you might, you just might move out of the presence of God. And think that you can do what God's doing here. Can I tell you what God's doing here is God. It's not Alan Domley, it's God. And while God's blessings are here, I want to stay under that. I want to stay under the showers of the blessings of God and soak every drop that he brings here. I'm saying give everything you can, soak it in. Can I tell you, there's another time we'll look back and we'll, we'll remember the times we wish we would have given our best. I think of the old preacher, Dr. Lee Robertson. Man of faith. Built the great Highland Park Baptist Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee to running several thousand every Sunday. On the day, uh, just about a month, I think, or so before he died, a preacher asked him, Dr. Robertson, Dr. Robertson, if you could live life over again, can you tell me what's the one thing you wish you would have done more? And he said this. He says, I wish I'd have lived more by faith. Amen. Yeah. The man of faith. Right. You know why? We'll always look back, ladies and gentlemen. We wish we'd have given more. Amen. Given our best. Have you ever played sports and you lost a game? Of course, that never happened to me. Have you ever looked back and after you lost the game, you remembered that one time you could have, if you'd have just made that one step and you could have, Block the shot or take that one. You just moved your hand just a little bit more. You could have stolen the ball. Or, or before that guy got that winning shot. Man, you could, you're right there. It's just like that. You know what I'm talking about. Like a slow motion moment that you just couldn't quite get there fast enough. And you, and you live it over and over and over again. Can I tell you? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, one thing you'll look back. You're going to get old one day. And one day when you get old, you'll look back at your young years that you wasted doing nothing that really benefited for eternity. And you'll look back and say, I wish I could have given more I look at some of our gray hairs in this church and I appreciate them they give everything they can I look at the stubble fields back here and they they're not they're not they're not young spring chickens anymore but I'm telling you right now they get their best that they have she's in her <coughs> and he's in his 80s am I correct in that in his 80s and they're still serving God doing what they can And you got people in their 20s and 30s sitting and doing nothing for God. One day they're going to get old. They're going to look back and say, I wish I'd have given more for God. I've never had anybody look back at life and say, I gave too much to God. 
I gave too much to God. I'm talking to some of you right now. The Holy Spirit's kind of just get in your heart right now. Say, it's time you step it up. It's time you stop messing around. This is, hey, we're losing this country. We're losing this world. And somewhere there's got to be some people that step it up and say, it's time to stop playing the games. Hey, give it your all. Give your best. One day I'll look back. When I think I've given my best, one day I'll look back and say, I think I could have given a little bit more. I think I could have given a little bit more. I could have given a little bit more to fight and sin and not letting that sin have so much control over me. I could have given a little bit more to to go on to, to witnessing to people and could have given a little bit more to God to say, God, I need you to do more in my life. Oh, let me tell you, the world has yet to see what God can do through one person who totally commits himself to God. Can I tell you right now, somewhere there's got to be people that'll say, I don't want to look back in life and say, I wish I'd have given more. Give your best you have right now. Whatever that best is. Give your best. Teenager, you've got the energy. You've got the vitality. Give your best. Hey, young person, give your best to God. We have one life to live. And every moment that we waste is a moment we can't take back. One night of sitting at home watching television when I should have been serving God or should have been in church. I can't take that back. One time when the Holy Spirit prompts my heart to talk to someone to invite them to church and I don't invite them to church, I can't take it back. One life. I will remember the words of caution. I will remember those times that I took for granted that I thought it's always going to be here and it won't always be there. I'll remember the times when I should have given my best to God. Can I tell you there's one other time that some will remember? It's that time they sat in church and they knew they weren't saved and they didn't accept Christ as their personal Savior. Can I tell you a story? There's a rich man had everything, had anything that the world could offer. But there laid at his gate a beggar full of sores. I don't know if that beggar witnessed or not, but that beggar was a Christian Christian man. And that rich man wanted nothing to do with that beggar. But the very split second that he hit hell. Regret came. The Bible says he hit the fires of hell, the hot fires of hell, the tormenting fires of hell. He hit the outer darkness of hell. And as soon as he hit that outer darkness and that darkness of hell, he lifted his eyes. The Bible says, in torments. Amen. He said, Father Abraham, would you send Lazarus? Then we dip his finger in water and let that water touch my tongue and cool my tongue. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tormented in this flame. You know what's happening? I told you so. I told you so. I told you to accept Christ. I told you to stop, try, try, stop trusting your baptism. I told you to stop trusting your good works. I told you to stop trusting your religion. I told you to stop trusting how, um, um, of how good you are. I told you, trust Christ. Amen. Amen. He's in hell lifting up his eyes in torments. And, and Abraham said, he says, I cannot come down. He says, there's a great gulf fixed between you and I. He says, he says, I, if I wanted to, I can't. The gulf. 
has already been spanned, and that span, it will only take you to heaven. There are people in this room right now who are lost, and you know it. And you don't know when your day of eternity is going to hit. And you may not remember it on the day of your death, but you'll remember it the very second that your soul hits a fiery hell. That fire will say, I told you so. Hell doesn't care if you wore a suit and tie or if you wear blue jeans to church. Hell does care whether you accept a Christ or not. Hell doesn't care what your education level is. Hell only cares have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Hell doesn't care. Listen to me. It doesn't care how many times you went to church. Hell only cares did you take the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior when the Holy Spirit prodded your heart. Hey, did you accept Christ? Hell won't care when you wouldn't get saved because you're afraid. What are your buddies going to think? What's the church going to think? Hell won't care. But the fires of hell will whisper every, every minute of eternity will whisper, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. You'll hear every sermon in your mind that the preacher preached and the invitation was given and it says, come, come, hey, all is ready to get saved today. You remember that when you're burning in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, do not walk out of this place and as a lost person, we don't know when that day is going to come. If you're not saved, today's the day to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Well, I don't want to be a part of your church, preacher. Didn't ask to be a part of my church. Are you saved? Being a member of Maranatha Baptist Church won't take one person to heaven. Well, I got baptized. Then you'll go to hell as a wet person. Because baptism doesn't take one person to hell. I'm, I'm tired of people saying, why are you saved? I got baptized. If that is your answer, you're not saved. So I don't like you saying that. Well, you'll remember it one day when you're in hell. Am I right? You go ahead and say, I won't come back. Yes, but you've heard the truth in one day in hell. You'll remember this because that baptistry and no baptistry will take anybody to heaven. The only reason why you'll go to heaven is because one day you realize you was a sinner on your way to hell. Jesus Christ died and shed his blood to pay for your sins, was buried and rose again. And he offered that to you as a gift. And he says, now you receive that and that alone as, the, as for your sin. When someone says to me, Brother Domley, why would you get saved? Nowhere does baptism come into the answer. Nowhere. Well, I went to a church and they baptized so we could receive Christ. Got news for you. They can baptize you a thousand times to receive Christ and you'll still die and go straight to hell because you've got to receive Christ. The thief on the cross never got baptized one time and yet he's in heaven right now. You know why? He looked over to Jesus and said, Jesus, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. Why? He's walking on streets of gold. Why? He's not looking back like the other thief in regret and say, I was that close to the Savior. I made fun of my buddy. He's in heaven and I'm in hell. I told you so. I told you so. Right. Yep. Who is it this morning? I preach words of caution from this pulpit because I love you so much and I've seen it happen time and time again. 
I can't tell you how many times I just, I said, God, I just, I just wish they'd listen. I'm not saying my opinion. I, I know this is right. I watch youth waste away their youth years. One day you're going to get older. Not my age, because I'm not old yet. You say, what's old? 56. You say, why that? I'm 55. On July 1st, 57 will be old. 56 will be young. One day you'll look back. You'll say, I wish I would have given more. I told you so. One day this preacher will be walking on streets of gold. And I'll be gone. And he won't walk through this door again. And I hope, I hope the next pastor who ever passes this place keeps this place going. It's a place of a lighthouse that keeps souls getting saved. But I, I just know history. And some will stay in. Man, we, I, wish we had, I wish we would have taken it for granted. Then don't. Don't take your brother. Don't take your sister. Don't take your mama. Don't take your daddy for granted. Hey, enjoy them while you have them. Yeah. Some of you this morning need to get saved. You've been trusted on the wrong thing, and you know it. And if you died right now, You won't even be in hell for one second before you hear the I told you so of the flame. Get saved. If I knew what I had to do to get you to accept Christ, if I had to get on my knees, and if I had to beg you to get saved, I would beg you to get saved today. Stop putting it off. Heaven's a real place. Hell is a real place. And I don't know how many people will sit under my voice and will split hell wide open. When that flame hits them, they'll have the, I told you, so the flame. I said, you should have gone. Amen. The preacher begged. The preacher asked. You should have gone. should have gotten saved. Amen. Swallow your pride. Get saved today. Amen. I told you, Peter. You should have listened. Father, a little bit of a sobering message this morning. Every once in a while, we need to be reminded of the I told you so's, and I didn't even hit the whole sermon. There are people that are going to one day look back, hear the I told you so's, and they just didn't listen when they should have, and they'll live in regret. All Jesus had to do was look at Peter and boy, that I told you so of the look. Oh, it certainly got him. There's some here this morning that need to get saved. Help them to get saved. Father, please work in hearts. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Who in here this morning is a preacher? I, I've been reminded of some things in my life. I don't know what they are. I've been reminded of some things in my life. God spoke to my heart. I'm saved, but God spoke to my heart. I need to get some things squared away today. Preacher, pray for me. If you like that, we just slip your hand way up high. Way up high. I see your hands all over. Many hands are raised. I see them all over.